Have you heard of dynamic per recipient reporting? You can actually set up a report to be emailed on a schedule, filtered for individual email addresses for different data and sent as a PDF of the report or even extract some data and send that as a CSV file. It's pretty cool. All right, you do need a Fabric workspace for this. This does not work on a pro workspace. It must be backed by Fabric capacity. And if you're interested to know how I went from this little file here, which is just a table in a data set with some email addresses, I've only got one, an email subject, something I want to filter on, something else I want to filter on, and then send that as an email automatically, maybe work day 10 and generate an email with a paginated report attached and maybe an extract of the data. I'll show you how. Let's go. So this process starts with you creating a data set or a semantic model that has a list of email addresses and the filters you want to apply. It could be something simple like, you know, just an email address, a little table that you've maintained in Excel or something, and whatever filter needs to apply to that email address. And you could set that to run on a schedule. I wanted to take this a little bit further and see if I could sort of automatically snapshot the prior month data on workday five or something like that. So I've actually added a little prior month um, functionality in here. I'll show you very quickly. So all I did was say, take the date time UTC now, okay? And I added eight hours because that's what Perth is. It's eight hours ahead. Um, add a number of months, which would be minus one for last month, okay? And then take the end of that month, so I've created that little formula. I'll put that in the description below. That's the, that's the bit there. Click the to table button that converted it to a table. And that gives me month. And just a couple of other little bits and pieces just to set this up, okay? But that was the key bit. Every time I refresh, that would be the end of the prior month. All good. Okay, let me apply that. And this should update. Excellent. I then publish this to a workspace and then I went into my report. So here we go. Here's my report. Okay, and I want to filter for peak for that email address and also just for the month of August to snapshot the data as of August. So I'm going to start in here. I'm going to say subscribe to report, new subscription dynamic per recipient, okay? It says connect your recipient data. That's that little distribution sort of uh, report, the one back here, okay? So this is just a little report on its own with a list of the email addresses and the people you want to fill, with the things you want to filter for them by. That might be a department name for this particular person. There might be another email address, etc. I'm just using one for this demo. Okay, so it's called monthly report distribution. That's the name of that little file. It's saying you, we need these things. So here's my little table. All right, I am actually gonna use all of them. I'm just gonna tick them all because I wanna use all of these things in this report. Now you might wonder why I'm using text EO month. Well, I discovered during testing, there's a bit of a bug that you can't filter by a date in a report. So that's something they're fixing next month. By the time you watch this video, well, depending on when you're watching it, but if you're watching this after October, say, of 2024, this should work just with a normal date. But I had to turn it into a text field currently. Okay, so there's the starting point. Then what's the name of my subscription? You know, some, link it to your report in some way. Here we go, get from data. I want to get, and this is the annoying bit, the, the label isn't long enough. See, it says subject or control or text or band, okay? This is the one I want, just the email. The subject, get from your data, that's gonna be the subject. Message, 
you know, hello, here's your report. Which page from this dashboard do you want to show a snapshot of? Let's do that one, daily averages. Do you want a link? Yes, would like a page preview? Sure. Um, that just controls which is the page preview. What would you like to attach? Okay, you can PDF, you can actually pick a different attachment type. Not quite sure how that would work. Okay, all good, next. Then the filtering. Okay, so I'm adding a filter. This then lists all the fields that are in my report. Okay, my full dashboard report. These are all the tables. There's my measures table. There's my timetable. There's my half hourly meter reading. So these are all the tables from my semantic model, the big model that I'm sort of filtering and sending the report from. For this, I want to use the um, tariff band. And from here, I'm going to pick, again, you have to hover over them, the band. Okay, that's the one, the control band. Okay, and I want to filter the date from my calendar. I went back in and I used end of month. This is my calendar table, okay, from my model. I had to create a text version of, you know, formatted as text of the uh, end of month. I just created an end of month column in Power Query. Here's my end of month, and I'll make sure I use end of month text as well. Text end of month. Awesome. I want it to run monthly. Uh, you can pick a particular day. This is new, last day of month. That's quite cool. Uh, maybe workday six or workday 10, perhaps. Um, what time? What time zone? There we go. Okay. Next. Save and close. And there we go. We've now got it. I've already had one created. Let's just double check which ones we got here. More options. This is the one with calendar month text filtering and tariff band filtering. And you can try it out. Okay, send now. It should say subscription sent. We'll go and have a look at that in a second. While I'm waiting, if we go, it normally takes like a minute or so to send. Let's go back into this workspace demo. Let's create a paginated report. So if I go back into the workspace, okay, you can go to your report here. You can say, create a paginated report. All I want is from my timetable, I'd like the tariff band. Um, from my calendar table, I'd like the date. And I would then, from my measures table, just like the, oh, well, let's go to demo measures. I just want how much I generated and how much I used. Okay, so I'm building this little report up. I then want to add a filter for the tariff bands, create a parameter, continue. All right, so tariff is required. Okay, so I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it uh, demo YouTube paginated dynamic. Should have made it a bit snappier than that. Okay, saving in progress. View report. Okay, I do have to oddly come in here and pick something. I'll pick peak and go view report because I actually want to set up subscribe, but you have to actually pick something first. So subscribe to report. Create subscription, dynamic per recipient. Monthly report distribution. You see I can use the same report over and over again for controlling multiple different reports. Let's do the all. Let's just leave text EO month selected. 
Okay, so again, I don't want it to go to that. I want it to get from data. I want it to use the email address, the email subject to get from data. There we go, email subject. You could put a message in. I want to attach it as maybe a CSV or an Excel file. Go for CSV if I was you. Okay, next. So, and then the filter pops up. See parameter, tariff band. And then the value, get from data, band. Okay, that was the band one. Next, schedule it, okay, monthly, maybe workday six at 4.45 p.m., maybe a quarter an hour later, not that it really matters. First time, next, save and close. Okay, and then I can just send now if I want to. Subscription sent. Now, just a word before we go and have a look at the final output, just a little word about how I then set this up. Because if I go back in, or let me close this, if I go back into the workspace, what I really need is this monthly report distribution table to refresh every month, to update that month end date. Now, because there's no links to external or anything external in there, you can't actually schedule the refresh. It's a bit annoying. So I'd probably do a random connection to a data flow or a website or something just to have a link that I can make it refresh. Because if I try and refresh, do a schedule refresh here, you get this warning saying you can't be refreshed because there's no data model connections. Um, so it's just because it's internal code, not linking to anything, like a calendar table on its own, can't refresh. So weird, but I would just add another random link in there. Okay, enough talk. Let's go and see if it's worked. Okay, inbox. All right, so here's my first one. Okay, here we go. It's filtered for July. All right, it is filtered for um, peak. Yeah, so that's filtered there. This is filtered for July. Now, interestingly, you're thinking, hey, didn't you pick August? Correct. But actually in the demo, I didn't actually click publish. So the online version was still showing July. All right, I panicked briefly then, but okay. And then in here would be the PDF of the entire report. Okay, so there's all the pages in that report. And the entire report is filtered just for July and just for that particular um, peak scenario, okay? You can see these because of some measures I've got that are overwriting it. Okay, so then if we go back in here, here's my paginated report. Okay, there's my little snapshot, only peak. I should have also, should have also applied a, um, a filter for the end of month text as well and assigned that, but I forgot. But you get the idea, okay? And again, there's my CSV file with all that data in. So I hope you find that useful. You know, do you have use cases in mind for this? You can just schedule this to run workday five. It just does a snapshot. You can run it whenever you want. It does require fabric and it will use up capacity. Okay. I'll hopefully be doing a few videos over the coming months and etc., where I discover how much some of these things actually use in terms of your capacity. Is F2 enough? Do you need F64? Do you need F32? How much does each of these things use? But we'll get there. All right, thanks for watching. Catch you in the next video. Before you go, check out one of my other videos or playlists and click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.